Hi there, it's Louise Martin Chu here for Art Collector, where I have the pleasure to be speaking to Erin Lawler about her exhibition, Memory of a Free Festival, which is on at Fox Jensen Macquarie in Auckland, New Zealand. Hey, Erin. Hi. Good to, good to be here, virtually. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> so Erin Lawler had her first solo exhibition in New York late last year and is a artist with a pretty incredible international practice living in London now again after I believe 26 years in Paris and she shows extensively also in Europe so she's joining us from her London studio in the UK and I'm in my home in Brisbane Australia so given that time's short we are here to speak specifically about her exhibition memory of a free festival which is at Fox Jensen Macquarie in Auckland so firstly, Erin, I just wondered if you could talk us, to us a little bit about your painting processes and how you create such large abstract paintings with large gestures and amazing depth and colour and turbulence. <laughs> um, well, probably the main, the most important thing about my practice is that I work entirely wet on wet with oil paint. And that is a, a way of working that implies all sorts of other things. And, very early on took me to working with such liquid oil paint took me to working on the ground which also then completely sort of changes the relationship to the canvas while you're working on an easel it's more or less a window whereas shifting to the floor means that the the, the painting itself becomes a sort of terrain that you're grappling with it implies a much more um complete sort of engagement of the body with the very, it's a very immersive way of working and um, certainly in recent years that it's not so much the canvases have got larger, the works all have got larger, the, the size of the canvases is more or less dictated by reach of my being against this it's very one ton, you know, graphic with the canvas, um, but working with diptychs and triptychs, multiple panels that allows me to, to enlarge further beyond my own which can go, go beyond the one-on-one -on -one relationship. And I hope that reproduces to a certain extent a very immersive experience for the, the spectator. I'm sure they have um, It also, sort of wet on wet, there's also, I mean, there's the question of the gesture. It's almost performative. It's certainly, you know, hugely immersive for me as a way of working. Um, that it also has a sort of a, a, a time limit on it as well. Someone once called it sudden death painting, and there is that sense that in the last instance, the last layers, it all has to pretty much come together and be sort of coherent overall. It all works or doesn't and has to be destroyed and started again, so. <laughs> mm, wow. Yeah. And what struck me about this exhibition as well is so the works have fairly intriguing titles, but also the title of the exhibition. I just wondered if you could talk to us about, you know, is there a memory that is at the heart of this exhibition? I, I, I think there are various memories. The title of the exhibition actually came through Andrew's text, but interestingly enough, it, it's a musical reference. It's an old David Bowie song. And, Andrew and I often have found actually we have uh, quite similar tastes in music and a lot of the same references and it's actually a, a Bowie song that I have previously referenced in other titles specific works. Um, I think the point is well in the case of the song it's a specific memory. A lot of my works are about um, memory yes I think there are things that resurface in the, in the works I, I mean I hope they do I hope the works are evocative in many ways what I about painting as a medium is there is that possibility, that capacity for um, very strong emotional or evocative communication that at the same time, if not gen generic, at least open, that it actually has multiple sort of interpretations and that the viewer is also going to interpret it inevitably through their own experiences and bring their own sort of reading to the table. And uh, painting it was, has been, um, space of projection sort of par excellence bit for the painter or the spectator and I think you to a certain extent have to accept that that there's always going to be a level of uh, interpretation or engagement from the spectator that you can't quite control but that's something to be embraced like something I, I enjoy with painting as opposed to the word which is specific <laughs> so yeah there are memories running throughout this exhibition and some of the titles 
memory and desire. That's actually a T.S. Eliot quote, but again, um, and another thing I love with Eliot, who's someone who often crops up as well, is a very visual poet, but also this way of working with um, time and space, that it's something that I think uh, translates very well to, to painting as well. Um, and and another one I think is the uh, cheerful country. That's actually from a uh, that's a Shakespearean reference. on the Prospero set out his island. Again, this Prospero's island is also imagined space. It's something that everyone experiences differently. So there's, it's all very deliberately, I hope, evocative but open <laughs> in terms of the possible narratives. And then that may have come to each other rather than helping. <laughs> 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 There is another mm. particular painting called May West, which has sections, you know, with your very large gestures that you make with those yeah. brushes, um, sections like mm. tonsil hair and a shoe and a sense of female presence. While it is still a very much an abstract painting. Um, and you've yeah. spoken in the past about resisting the narrative in your work. Um, and in the catalogue essay, there's a suggestion of a wrestle between, between privacy and disclosure. So I wonder, yes. just in this exhibition, are you opening the door a little more to um, allow us to chase a narrative in the work? I don't know if it's a little more. I mean, I, th I think the work has come and gone, you know, back and forth towards that over the years. The first 10 years I was painting, I was actually painting portraits, which were extremely, um, you know, much more clearly that the subject was there and was, was you know, was, was stated. In, in, in a clearer way. Um, I do think, I, I've always slightly objected to the term sort of abstract really in terms of my work, because again, I, I, it's very important to me that it be highly evocative. Um, and certainly in recent years with, with the titles, I've probably been you know, opening that door more, yes, in terms of allowing the spectator to sort of, I mean, it's wonderful if, if Mae West seems, seems to you know, <laughs> evoke the ideas of hair and, all those things. I mean, certainly it felt to me like a, a feminine sensuous painting. Um, it's one of those ones in which the, 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 the title sort of imposed itself when I was, you know, confronted with the work at the end. Um, in some ways, that's when you know a painting's finished. It's when it becomes its sort of its own thing and has its own identity and starts almost to talk back at you. So... Uh, <laughs> I was just saying the work really is so evocative and invites you in this a really sumptuous surface but this sense of so much that's happening beneath that you can discern without actually you can see some of it but not all of it so um good thank you glad to hear it <laughs> <laughs> well look i think that's all we have time for but thank you so much for speaking to us erin and um i do thank uh, you everyone who's watching to jump onto the Fox Jensen and Macquarie website and have a look at these works because they, um, they're just so superb, large and embracing and um, they're generous, I think, in every way. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you for this opportunity to talk <laughs> and the long distance anyway. Thank you. <laughs>